everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Miranda and today I would like to share with you some tips I've learned while traveling in Europe. Now, just as a side note, this is going to be general tips. So if you'd like information about transportation or getting around, I will leave a link in my bio to a different video. Tip number one, always, always have loose change. In Europe, they do charge you for going to the bathroom and it's usually only one euro, but you're going to want loose change on you. And this is also true for buses. In some regions of Europe, when you're on a bus, they will charge you to put your bag underneath the bus. Now this is not true for Flixbus. I've never been charged for Flixbus, but a lot of the local buses in certain regions will. And sometimes it's only a few cents and sometimes it's up to five US dollars. So just always make sure you have enough loose change for the buses, but especially for the bathrooms. And speaking of buses, that brings me into tip number two. In Europe, they don't always accept online payments for buses. This is especially true in regions such as the Balkans or Eastern Europe. They actually prefer you to show up to the bus station and buy your ticket there rather than buying it online. I've seen many people get denied who have tried to book it online in advance. Now this is kind of switched when you're talking about Western Europe because in Western Europe, it's easier to buy your train tickets online in advance. Tip number three is also about buses, but this one is specifically for Flixbus. If you're traveling around Western Europe, Flixbus is a great way to get around because it's cheaper than the trains, but it's also so easy, so simple. Flixbus also operates in parts of Eastern Europe and parts of the Balkans, but not all of the Balkans. So don't always just assume that Flixbus will be operating where you are. My next tip is about trains. So trains are a very great way to travel around Europe, especially if you're in Western Europe. They're comfortable, they're always located in the center of town. You never have to go through airport security. It's just so convenient. However, trains don't always operate throughout all of Europe. In the Balkans, for example, they're pretty much non-existent. And in regions like this, you'll be taking buses more often than trains. And just to note, buses are not very reliable. They're rarely on time. Border crossings can also be very long and it could get pretty stressful sometimes too, like that one time when they didn't return my passport to me. Also, when your bus is late and you're just sitting there waiting and nobody there speaks English and the bus signs and all the signs are not in English either or even like the English alphabet. So you have no idea if your bus even came or what's going on when the buses are hours late. It could be very stressful. Now, I'm not saying don't take buses. I just want to prepare you that sometimes it's kind of stressful. Once again, I'm talking about local buses, not Flixbus, because if you take Flixbus, there's an app on your phone and it tells you if the bus is late and there's typically other Westerners on that bus. So people there will be speaking English. So you're not completely lost and completely on your own. Number five, take advantage of the fact that hostels in Europe have kitchens. Pretty much every hostel I was in had a kitchen, had a refrigerator, had a stove, had a microwave. And I would take full advantage of this because in Southeast Asia, they don't. I actually didn't come across a single hostel in all of Southeast Asia that had a kitchen. Number six, English is very widely spoken throughout all of Europe, so I wouldn't be worried about people not speaking English while you're in Europe. Now let's move into tipping. In America, we have a very big tipping culture. However, in Europe, it is not quite like this. In some countries, you shouldn't tip at all. In some countries, gratitude is already included in the bill, and in other countries, you are supposed to tip. So I would look up what country you're in ahead of time to see if you should tip and how much you should tip. When you do have to tip though, just note that it's a lot lower than what you'd tip in the United States. Tip number eight, Europe is still very much cash based, which is different from in the US where it's actually getting kind of rare to even carry cash. Most people just whip the card out for everything, but Europe is very cash based no matter what country you're in. So always carry cash, especially for street food. Now let's talk about water, which is not free ever. Sometimes you could ask them for tap water from the sink and occasionally they might give it to you, but most of the time they will say no and you are required to buy a bottle of water. And in many countries such as Romania, the bottle of water will be the same price as your food. 
Number 10 is about restaurants. Restaurants work a little bit differently than in the US and this goes beyond just tipping. So don't expect service right away. Sometimes it takes them a long time to approach you to ask you what you want. And sometimes it could be really hard to even get their attention. They walk really quickly and they're just really busy doing their job and it could be really hard to make eye contact with them. And without being able to make eye contact and saying, hi, hey, over here. They usually don't come for a while. This is also true after you get your food. They don't come back to check on you. So if you ordered water and then you are finished with it and you want more water, because that happens to me a lot, they won't come back and ask you for more water. They won't come back and ask if you want salt, pepper, any of that stuff. Pretty much what you get in the beginning is what you get. So if you want anything extra, just remember to ask for it before they walk away. Then at the end of your meal, they will not bring you the check because they find that to be rude. In Europe, they go and they want to enjoy their meal. They want to sit down, talk with their friends, talk with their family, and they feel like they're rushing you if they bring you the check. So you will need to figure out how to get their attention to ask for the check. And if you don't ask for the check, you'll be sitting there for quite some time. Tip number 11 is about Uber. So Uber sometimes will exist in the country you're in and sometimes it doesn't. So when I was in Romania, it was great because Uber did work and I was able to use Uber to get around. However, don't rely on it because not every country in Europe has Uber. So I'd look it up ahead of time to see if Uber will work. And if it doesn't, they have an app called My Taxi, I believe it is. And that is what you could use instead. Or sometimes you might just have to take a cab. However, if you're trying to get around a city, instead of using Uber or something similar, you could also rent a bike. Europe is very much set up for riding bikes and it's very easy to get around cities when you're riding a bike and it's also such a fun way to see the city. This brings me into my next tip which is about public transportation. So in the US public transportation isn't used super commonly unless you're in somewhere like Chicago or New York. However in Europe pretty much everywhere you go public transportation seems to be set up pretty well. It is used by many many of the locals. It's usually easy to navigate and it's such an easy way to get around the city. If I'm in a big city I'll usually take the metro and sometimes they'll even take the bus. I guess we're back to discussing transportation because my next tip is about trains. So trains actually change by the day, just like airlines do. So if you're in Western Europe in particular and you're looking up train prices, the price you saw yesterday might not be the same price that you see today. It is very similar to the way airfare works. So the best thing you could do if you don't have a Eurail pass is usually just to book your tickets ahead of time when you see a good deal. Europe also has very cheap flights and I'm talking flights across Europe for about 20 to $25. However, if you'd like to keep that price that low there are a few tips and tricks you would need to look into and if you're interested I do have a video about that and I'll link it down below. This brings me to my final tip which is about student discount cards. So if you're a student or a former student and you still have your student ID card you could use this to get discounts on so many things, so many attractions, so many museums, even things like transportation. So if you have one do not forget it at home. And that wraps up my 15 tips for traveling around Europe. If you have any other useful tips please let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have any tips you'd like to share, please leave a comment down below. That would help both me, who's going back to Europe pretty soon, and also other people who are watching this video to get useful tips. Bye!